Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to lesson 50 in the Intermediate Algebra series. So in the next few tutorials I'll be explaining how to solve absolute value inequalities. But before I get started on a specific example, I wanted to explain the difference in the types of solutions you'll get for these two different types of absolute value inequalities. So basically what we have here on the left hand side is we have the absolute value of some expression and an expression can be something like 4x plus 2, it could be 3x minus 6, um, pretty much all of those types of things are expressions. And we're going to take the absolute value of that, and we're going to say that that's less than n. And so basically, what we want to do is we want to solve for x and find all the values of x that make that statement true. So that's going to be what we're looking at. In the other case, we might have the same type of thing, except for instead of the less than sign, we're going to have the greater than sign. So these are the two types of absolute value inequalities that we'll be dealing with in the next few videos. So now let's go ahead and talk about the types of solutions that we're going to find for this one compared to this one. So the easiest way to look at this, I think, is to draw a number line for each of these. And then we're just going to put the number 0 here on each of these number lines. And then we're also going to mark n and negative n on both of these. We're going to go up to n and negative n on this one as well. And basically the way we want to think about these solutions is we kind of want to think about the absolute value of this expression. We kind of want to think about this as a distance from zero. And so basically in order to solve this right here, um, we want to find the distance from zero that's less than a distance of n. So if we start at zero and we go all the way up to but not including n, pretty much all going to all of these values right here would give us a distance less than n. And likewise, we could also go from 0 to negative n. If we went from 0 to negative n, that would be a distance of n in the negative direction. So if we want to get a distance from 0 that is less than n, we could go all the way up to, but not including, negative n, traveling in the negative direction from 0. And so basically from here to here, all of these values would work. That would be from 0 to any of these distances here would be less than a distance of n, and same with these over here. So basically, the type of solutions that we're going to get for this type of absolute value inequality is going to be basically anything that is greater than negative n. So that would be basically our expression in this case. So whatever our expression is, needs to be greater than negative n, that way it's kind of on this side of the negative n, but it also needs to be less than the positive n so that it includes all these, but doesn't include this over here. So this would be the type of solution that we're basically going to get if our absolute value inequality starts out in this form here. So if we look at it in this form, we see this less than sign here, then we know that we're going to go with this type of solution. So on the other hand here, if we kind of think about this as the same way, we're basically looking for the distances from zero that are greater than n. So with the same type of logic, if we're looking for distances from zero that are greater than n, we're looking at this stuff over here, and then we could also go a distance greater than n in the negative direction, and that would be all the distances that are less than negative n. So from zero to any one of these points would be a distance greater than n. So don't get confused now that we're going to a negative point, a negative value, because even if we go from 0 to negative n, we're still going a positive distance. So anyway, I just wanted to point that little detail out to you. But so really what we're going to do here for the type of solution we want for this type of absolute value inequality is we're basically going to be including all of the, uh, basically the expression is going to be all of the values let me go ahead and write this expression, all of the values that are less than negative n. And it's also going to be all of the values that are greater than positive n. So we kind of have two parts to this type of, uh, for a solution of uh, an absolute value inequality of this type. So this one right here is all inclusive. It's kind of all the same chunk. This one is more of a union. We can have our solutions kind of over here or we can have our solutions over here, but not in the middle. So if we have some sort of absolute value of some expression greater than n, we're looking at this type of solution. And if we have 
the absolute value of some expression less than some number n, then we're going to be basically starting to find the solution in this form. So anyway, I just wanted to point uh, this stuff out to you guys before we get started in actually solving a specific example, because this is an important concept to know about when it comes to solving absolute value inequalities. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out to you, so now hopefully when we get uh, to solving specific examples, you guys will have a heads up on how to go about this. So thanks for watching, stay tuned for the next few tutorials on absolute value inequalities. Um, I really appreciate all you guys watching and uh, all the positive feedback you've been giving me. So have an excellent day, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.